Hi. Yes, I have started. I'm doing a thing. Welcome. I am going to have to take this out of my lip because I do not have piercings in my lip and this moves when you talk. Anyway, hi! I'm Anya, also known as Lalian Cosplay. I am a cosplayer streamer. I make all of my costumes on stream. I don't make all of my costumes. This is all pieced together from various places. Uh, but yes, I am the cosplay guest at uh, CitrusCon this year, and I'm super duper excited about it. Uh, and I am going to be doing a little bit of a, um, I, I was playing off of Cl Clarissa Explains It All with the title, which I'm sure no one got, but that's okay. Uh, in any case, I'm going to be talking about photo shoots here. So this is very much a ask me all the questions that you want. Very loosey-goosey. I literally made a uh, PowerPoint like 30 minutes ago. So uh, there's just lots of pretty pictures in it. Uh, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen because it is a very pretty, I realized, moving background. I had no idea that this rainbow was moving until I looked and went, oh, okay. But in any case, Anya explains it all, photo shoot edition. Um, so for some context for you, I have been in a variety of theater related things for 23 years. And so I come at cosplay from kind of the, the theater side of things. Um, I really, really got into cosplay when I became obsessed with Yuri on Ice. And I fell in love with the little shit Yuri Plazetsky, and I had to cosplay him. And I have cosplayed probably 10 different versions of him at this point. I don't have a ton of photos of him. However... Um, I have done photo shoots with so many different cos uh, cosplay photographers and just general photographers, taken photos just of myself, things like that. And so you can see me right now. I am in my uh, DK Cherry Blossom. Um, I also cosplay actual like adult cherry. And uh, so sometimes with photo shoots, Mm, how should I go about this? So I always think about how the character is. Yeah. So I think about the, the character's personality and uh, who uh, they are as a person uh, when I'm thinking about what I want to do for a photo shoot. And so this includes things like in Adult Cherry, um, he, while he is still a little bit of that revel from when he was, uh, you know, a teenager, uh, he's much more refined and uh, very much like wearing the kimonos and things like that. And so I took advantage of the cherry blossom season here, and uh, it was definitely kind of like a softer side of him. Um, and uh, if you have questions, oops, sorry, I hit my mic. If you have questions to ask, um, ask them in the chat. Uh, just so you know. Uh, and then, oops, let me go over to the keynote here. And then uh, if you look at uh, these other ones, I have my lovely Yuri Plazetsky here, kind of a little bit more on the punky side. Um, and uh, what's interesting about this one, and uh, the photos on the left-hand side are also by Cleography, who I had mentioned in the first uh, slide, and my longa over here is uh, by uh, Bo-rography, who is one of my closest friends. I adore him. Um, in any case, so, uh, you know, we were looking at kind of the different elements of who these characters are as people to uh, add to that element of what we wanted to do for the photo shoots. So with this longa one, which is interesting, this is actually for the Runway Naha fanzine. And this is at a bakery <laughs> in the town where I live. And I saw it and I was just like, I desperately need to do a photo shoot here. Who and what is the right thing for this photo shoot. And so I uh, ended up creating this kind of piecemeal jacket. It's a tabard, if you know what that is. 
And from that, I kind of created the story uh, about uh, this version of Longa. Uh, and so that was, uh, that was kind of the, the element there. And then um, this is just me talking about these photos right now. This is fine. But literally any questions at all you have. Um, and then... So this one is a really interesting story. So all photo shoots are going to be different depending on the photographer that you work with. So uh, an example is Zen Chan Photography. Uh, she is in um, Freiburg im Breisgau. I'm in Germany. Uh, and so I traveled down south uh, here in Germany to shoot with her. And uh, what's interesting, what you don't see in this shoot is you can kind of see it in my expression here in this behind the scenes photo. I spun around in circles about 50 times to get the exact right photo. Thank you. Um, so it takes some, it takes some work. It takes some time to really get that uh, shot, get the exact shot that you want. Uh, it can take time and different photographers have different styles. And so um, if I were going for this kind of photo, I wouldn't ask a couple of other photographers that I know to try to do this kind of shoot because uh, it's not that their uh, skills are less or anything like that. It's just different skills. Does that make sense? Let's see. Maitre asks, uh, is the location, does the location come first or the cosplay? Like, do you have a cosplay idea first and then you'd search for a good location? Or do you encounter a location and think, wow, it would be a good location for this character? Honestly, it depends. So, for example, I already had my HAL jacket. I have it right here. Uh, it took me 55 hours to make. I knew that I wanted to make a fancy HAL. And so from there, I was searching for a good location, a good photographer who could really capture the, the vibe that I was going for with Hal. And uh, Zen Chan is extremely picky. Um, like she does uh, paid shoots and the money value is absolutely worth it. But here in Germany, there's something called PFP, which is basically like trading your modeling and your cosplay for the photography. And so she's extremely picky with who she chooses for those things. And so um, she always wants these really ornate costumes and things like that. And so um, we talked and I showed her my design, my jacket, all of that. And Freiburg im Breisgau, you can see it here, is a gorgeous old city to do photo shoots in. And especially these kinds of vibes, I have the extreme fortune of living in Europe where it is really easy to find these kind of really cool old town kind of locations. Um, and then if you look here, I'll go back one. So let's see, how do I go back? Can I just do this? Yes. So um, with the uh, Christmas shoot here, um, here in Germany and a lot of Europe, and you know this major, but um, there are Christmas markets. And so uh, my friend Yuyu and I, uh, we really wanted to do DK Matcha Blossom. And I just said, well, you know, why don't we do a Christmas market shoot? Because it's just such a fun vibe. And I had, um, so this cloak that I have on here is my grandmother's old cloak. It was uh, her favorite piece of clothing. And I love pulling it into costumes whenever I can. And it really just suited, like, uh, Cherry is slightly punkish, but still wanting to uh, kind of explore those softer sides, you know? And so that's uh, kind of what I focused on here. And so it really is a mix of the two, uh, depending on what you want to do. Uh, then let me go back here. I think I have one more. Yeah. Come on. Next slide. There we go. Uh, and then I have uh, a couple of other things. So themes uh, with my photo shoots. Um, I've done a lot of zine photo shoots. So the two Yuri Plazetsky photos that I have here, uh, one of them, the top one was for the, um, oh, what was it? It was uh, a holiday zine. And then the bottom one was for the pride zine. Yeah, 
there's you you so um xx celestia i forget how to say your username but this is my this is my dk joe <laughs> in the chat um but yeah so uh focusing on the themes and stuff as well um so thinking about the locations that you need to go to so what's interesting is the pride zine shoots so this was during the pandemic uh like the height of it and so we actually shot all of this hello welcome welcome uh we shot the the pride zine photos in my photographer's um office and we draped the fabrics behind me we found these uh confetti packets that were really nice and cheap and uh, the perfect colors for it and uh, we had to make do, but uh, we figured out how to make it work given the constraints that we had, uh, which was an interesting challenge. And I see that there are other people talking. Um, when working with a photographer, do you bring the vision to them, allow them to have the creative control or work together? Again, this really depends on the photographer. Uh, for example, with Zen Chan, uh, she very much has this very particular vision uh, that like how the characters are supposed to be and pose and go, that um, it's not a bad thing. I'm just putting that out there. It's not a criticism, uh, but she's very particular about the way that you are posing and things like that. Uh, for me personally, with my acting background, I'm always focused on characterization when I'm in costume and when I'm doing a photo shoot. And so I will actually shift my posture and shift, um, you know, just how I, um, how I, my expression and things like that, how I act uh, is dependent on the character. And so with Yuri, I do a lot of like spread legged and like just, you know, kind of perching vibes. And even with DK Cherry, a lot of times I'm just, I'm sitting in very weird, very bisexual out, uh, like positions and things like that, because that's just uh, to me, like the, the characterization. Um, but a lot of times, like I know the character and what I want to do for the story. Uh, so uh, another good example, this isn't BL, but uh, just two days ago, I did a photo shoot with a friend and biography uh, in a graveyard. The only concept was that we were in our two costumes, which if anyone knows Critical Role, we were, uh, I was Vexalia and my friend was Keyleth. And uh, we were in a graveyard. And because we were in a graveyard, I was just like, we need to have some sad photos. We need to show them mourning for no spoilers, XYZ characters. It needs to be dramatic. And I can cry on command. <laughs> so I uh, definitely had some very tearful photos in that shoot specifically. Um, and I should specify, uh, because it was a graveyard, uh, all of the bodies actually aren't in that graveyard anymore. It's just a memorial and it's a state park now or a, a city park. And so uh, that's part of why I was like, okay, we can, we can shoot here. I'm comfortable with this. Uh, let's see. Do you prefer solo shoots or partner partners? That it depends because when you have a partner to play off of, you have a lot more freedom the way I see it. So um, you can get more into the character because I find myself when I'm in an, just an individual uh, photo shoot, I have a couple of very choice poses and positions especially uh, when I am in female cosplay. When I'm in male cosplay, it's a little bit different. I think it's a little bit easier for me to get into the character. But um, I have this one particular pose that I do a lot where it's my hands out like this, and I'm like tilted slightly. Uh, you see it in quite a few of my female uh, photos. Um, but it, it takes a little bit of work, uh, and uh, I really like to focus on who the character is and how they would stand, how they would uh, be for the, for the camera, you know? I see typing, so I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not my favorite pose, it's just, 
a really comfortable one and it's interesting. So the way I see it uh, and from my experience, just because you're comfortable doesn't mean that it's a good photo. There have been times where I've been like, oh yes, this exact position is extremely comfortable for me to be sitting in. And then the photographer turns the camera around and I go, oh no, that is highlighting the wrong things. I don't like how that is positioning. And that's one important thing to communicate with your photographer is that uh, if you have something that you're not comfortable with, that you don't like uh, being shown on camera, like a really good example for me, I don't like this spot right here. And so I'll often like, I'll want them to shoot from above, not below. Um, I don't like there to be like, I don't like my face looking wide, things like that. Let's see, is there a character cosplay location for a character on your wish list for a shoot? I always love shooting at castles. It is so much fun. I do, I would love to do an arcade photo shoot. Maybe, maybe with DK, uh, Cherry and Joe. I think that would be very, very fun. Um, and there's also all different kinds of like photo shoot museums and things like that here in Germany and I'm sure elsewhere too, but I really want to do shoots at something like that. It would be super cool. Let's see. What's your favorite part of the cosplay process? Creating the costume, makeup, or modeling? So, sorry, I just saw you use comment. Yes, let's do an arcade shoot sometime. I desperately want to. Um, my favorite part of the cosplay process is actually building the cosplay. Like there's a uh, point at the beginning that I am extremely excited. I have so much fun like making this. I said it, but for those who aren't here, this took 55 hours to sew. And so <laughs> it was a lot of work. And Yuyu has also done a howl, so they know. But these diamonds are a bitch. They are not fun. Uh, and so they take a lot of work to do. And then you also have to cover up your mistakes. Um, and so my least favorite thing to do on any costume is sleeves. I have a word for them and it is sleevels because sleeves are evil. Uh, they are the most difficult thing in the world to sew. And part of it is because I am obsessed with top stitching everything. It makes everything so much nice, nicer and cleaner uh, when you look at them. Like all of the spots here on the diamonds have a top stitch on them and that holds the, uh, the folds open. So it looks so much nicer than if you didn't do that or even if you just ironed, you know? So that's definitely uh, one of my favorite things within sewing cosplays, top stitching, favorite thing, sleeves, least favorite thing there's so little space <laughs> it's a struggle um let's see so i talked about you know talk to your photographer about the things that you don't like and talk to them about what you really really like uh talk to them about uh, particular poses that you love to do or if there are specific things that you want to do in your photo shoot my favorite thing, I'm also a photographer, and my favorite thing in the world is when my cosplayers come to me and they have reference photos of particular poses that they want to replicate. Um, it doesn't even need to be the character or characters. It can be, hey, I saw this cool pose and I absolutely loved it and I would love to do this pose as well. And so I'm very good at replicating poses in photos as the photographer. It's absolutely one of my favorite things to do. And as a cosplayer too, but I'm, I'm really good at when I'm the photographer. Um, let's see, uh, some tips about photo shoots. Especially if you don't know the photographer very well, like if you're, for example, at a convention, my top recommendation is to, uh, first of all, vet them, make sure that they're an okay person, um, because there are a lot of people out there that are predatory, unfortunately, um, especially in the cosplay scene in the States mainly is my experience. Uh, but always bring a person with you. Always, always, always. If a photographer tells you not to bring an assistant or a friend, that's a bit of a red flag. 
Um, so I have had an instance where I've had to rescue someone from a photographer before, and it is not a fun experience. And uh, so the best thing, just be safe. If you don't feel safe with a person, just leave. Even if you spent money on the shoot, your safety is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, what... Let's see. What was your favorite moment during a photo shoot? I... <laughs> Um, I'm, I have a really bad memory, so, uh, I'm just thinking about my shoot this week. Uh, there was a point where my friend Eve, uh, we were posing together and I could tell she was doing something, but we were both wearing elf ears and I could not tell what was happening. And so I turned and looked at her. <laughs> she just went, I was biting your ear. <laughs> Which is just the funniest thing in the world to me. Because I couldn't feel it because it was my elf ear and it was this long. So uh, that was very, very entertaining, and I liked that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I'm, I'm seeing that there is someone typing, so I'm just waiting to see. Yeah, at this point, I've probably done, like, I don't know, 50, 60 shoots. I do all different kinds all the time, and I definitely don't post everything which i need to get better at but sometimes you're just very forgetful you know um yeah i'm just curious to see yeah i've done shoots like i've done self shoots i've done which just means like you know you're setting up your camera it's almost like the tiktok side of things you know um just uh i've done self shoots before and one of the things that i do with that is i actually have backdrops uh, which you don't necessarily need. Um, you can set something up easily even without backdrops. Um, I uh, love doing those, even if it's just like to test out the character and uh, test out how you want to pose with them. A really good tip, especially for a new character that you haven't uh, shot before, is to just stand in the mirror and pose like choose three or so poses that you know you want to do for a photo shoot and just practice getting into that pose because when you do that repetitively your body will just naturally go into the poses that you want to do and then you don't have to really think about it let's see when shooting with a partner do you treat it as acting especially when it's intimate romance scene or the mishaps or funny moments you can remember so I definitely treat it as acting. Um, I get into the character when I'm uh, doing a photo shoot. Uh, the important thing to do is to communicate with the other person. Um, I have shippy photos that are uh, just very naturally like, um, say we're this, we're this close to each other, uh, fake kissing, things like that. Uh, but you always talk to the other person first, make sure that they are comfortable with doing that. And if not, what are they comfortable with doing? Because I've had some um, couple shoots uh, with some people that I know that I have done different poses specifically because they didn't want to do kind of the, the closer, more intimate photos. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, everyone, as uh, they do their own comfort level, and that is perfectly fine. Um, for mishaps, um, there was, mm, I'm trying to think. Uh, there was one time, it was a Howl and Sophie shoot, um, and this was at Konichi last year in Castle, although it's not in Castle anymore. Uh, but I think the, the closest I have to a mishap is that uh, going back to that, the comfortable pose is not always the pretty one for the photos. Um, I was lying down on a low stone wall with my head in my Sophie's lap. And the pose I had to take was so uncomfortable. And I was also wearing a binder. And so like, I couldn't feel anything. Um, and I just told her, don't worry, you can put your hand wherever, I can't feel anything, it's fine. Um, and I was in the most uncomfortable position possible, but the photos look awesome. And uh, my tailbone regretted it afterward. That was really bad. Ooh. 
And another mishap as a photographer. Uh, so Lalian Photo is my uh, photography Instagram account. And if you scroll down, you'll see a Ronda Light uh, cosplayer. I think it's Ace Attorney. They are on what's essentially like a railing. And then there's a photo of them falling off of the railing. Uh, they were trying to balance on this railing and slipped and fell. And luckily didn't, like there was just like a two, three foot drop. And I got the best photo possible. And this was with my film camera and like analog. And they fortunately weren't injured. But the first thing they said when they popped up was, did you get the shot? <laughs> and I did. Shockingly. It was, it was scary, but they were okay. <laughs> that was really funny. Thinking of our wannabe smooch at the Christmas market. Yeah, they are fun. Um, let's see. How many pictures would you say you do during a one-hour shoot, and how many of those are usable for editing and posting afterwards? That is really hard to say. So it depends um, on the photographer. So from my side of things, I... I come at it from, I am a film photographer first, uh, so analog. I have a particular number of shots on my roll of film. And so if it is a roll of film, which I do still shoot sometimes, there are like 32 shots on that thing. And I will do maybe two photos per pose per location. Um, very, very limited because you want to bracket to make sure you get the right lighting. Um, and that still does transfer over a little bit into my digital photography. I take very limited photos. And so I will take maybe 50 shots um, in a photo shoot. And my photo shoots are usually about 30 minutes long uh, when I'm uh, the photographer on that side of things. And so I'll take, say, 50 photos. And uh, um, a lot of them are usable, but sometimes it'll be like something's just slightly off. Maybe they don't quite like their pose. Maybe we found a better angle to that pose, things like that. And so there could be like 15 to 20 shots that are perfectly usable from that. Um, and then for my side of things as the photographer, they can pick six photos uh, from those or they can pay a little extra because I'm a paid photographer. Um, it's my degree. Uh, and so then they can pick more. Uh, so significant amount. Uh, then there's my friend, Tim Borography. He shot, we were at the graveyard for two, two and a half hours the other day, and he shot over 600 photos. <laughs> I don't know how. And part of that, his thought process is that he wants to make sure that he gets exactly the right, like, when something is flowing, like if you have um, a lacy dress or organza or whatever, he wants to make sure that he gets the exact right shot with the wind going through them, things like that. Yeah, exactly. If the vibe vibes, you just got to vibe with it. Exactly, you, you. Uh, so it really, it depends on the photographer. But I know I definitely take fewer photos uh, because of my analog photography background. And I focus more on getting the right, um, just getting the exact right shot and just doing a couple of photos and then knowing that it's solid and then you also don't have to sift through 600 photos later to find the ones that you want. Uh, and then you don't have 10 of the, basically the exact same thing with just slight differences. Does that make sense? But that's also like a personal preference of mine, I think. Do you feel like your photography background has really come in handy? Definitely. Because uh, when I am in a photo shoot, like with someone who is less experienced in modeling, for example, than me, um, I'm able to help with positioning, especially if, say, for example, the photographer themselves is a little bit newer. I can uh, work with positioning, work with uh, getting the right angles, things like that. And so, like, for example, I can look at the back of the camera and say, okay, this is good, but what if we shift it just slightly and get a different angle on this shot? Uh, that definitely helps as well. 
Let's see, I think the only difference for me is if it's motion photography, that usually takes a lot more pictures than a standstill pose, definitely. Like for example, with the spinning of Howl, uh, Zen Chan took so many photos, not just because we were doing it repeatedly, because but because she wanted to make sure that she got the exact right, got the exact right swoop of the jacket, things like that. Let's see, that'd be my nightmare to sift through hundreds of pics when one to ten, 10 to 20 pics are very similar. Yeah, I, I don't have an interest in that. It's so much work. Let's see, uh, how do you deal with any sort of uh, perfectionism or have instances of dis disappointment, discouragement, uh, discouragement, I can talk with an entire session. Um, I've definitely had to deal with that before. Um, it can be hard to deal with, like, looking at the photos from a shoot and being like, I really wish I had worn a different uh, shirt, I had changed my makeup up, things like that. Um, if it's something that is able to be fixed in post, um, I sometimes get permission to do that myself. Sometimes I'll say, hey, I'm really sorry. I'm really unhappy with X, Y, Z thing. Is there any way that that can be changed? And uh, see if we can work together to get it better. Sometimes there are not fun experiences at the shoot itself that even if it's really good photos and a really good shoot, like the pictures themselves, I can't look at the photos anymore. And uh, I won't go into details with that, but you just kind of have to move on with it. Sometimes I can do a reshoot uh, with someone else and have a better experience. Um, it's not the end of the world. And sometimes you just have to call it a wash and say it's unfortunate, but this just didn't work out. Uh, let's see. To be honest, a good photographer needs to deal with the model telling them, hey, I'm not comfortable with that, be it pose or vibe. Nothing's worse than a horrible vibe. Yeah, I remember there was one time I was shooting, um, this is back in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, when I used to live there. I was shooting uh, two of my friends. They were dressed as um, Boku no Hero characters. I'm forgetting right now. One of them was Deku. Deku and Icy Hot. What's his name? Todoroki. Um, so I was shooting their uh cosplays at this convention and it's like an 800 person convention it's very very small and so all of the photographers know each other everyone knows everyone at this convention and uh, there was one point where a photographer came up to us and uh, we were doing some dancing pose i was taking photos of them for and they and i'm not gonna give gender or anything like that they will stay anonymous but uh, they started just offering all of these suggestions and saying, I used to be a ballroom dancer. You're doing this all wrong. All of these things. None of the photos from what they were suggesting turned out because they were um, not fully in their right mind at the time. Um, but also just... It, everyone was uncomfortable, and you could tell that the cosplayers were uncomfortable with the poses that they had them do. And uh, it was one of those situations where we just basically dealt with it until they went away and then got the shots that we wanted uh, because it just wasn't worth raising a stink or anything like that. Exactly. The vibe didn't vibe. Uh, this photographer also uh, pulled me aside when I was wearing my Dragonair cosplay. Um, and they uh, tried to take some photos of my costume, and I have never seen those photos, but also they were very uh, not with it. Yeah, it was very unpleasant, and I got away as quickly as I could, because sometimes that's all you can do. But finding a friend, stay with your friends. Always bring a friend to a photo shoot. Always, always, always. I'm just seeing you, you typing. Let's see, we have one here too. He constantly asks me for photos, but always makes me feel so uncomfortable posing and just interpersonal, oof, yeah. Um, I know a couple of photographers, hey, I'm totally fine with that. 
this is like my streams on Twitch, honestly. Uh, just chatting and chatting and answering questions. Um, yeah, there's a photographer that I've worked with uh, over here who has um, made some unpleasant notes, said some things that I was not comfortable with in the shoot, and I just kind of dealt with it until it was over because I wanted to make sure that the other cosplayer was safe as well. Grammar, who, who cares about grammar? Grammar does not exist. Yeah, sometimes the safer thing to do, unfortunately, is to just wait until it's over because you don't want to uh, cause a conflict. Uh, it's happened a couple of times, and I don't end up sharing the photos if I even get them. It's just the better way to stay safe and keep the other person safe as well. Yeah. Hang on one second, I need to close my door. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, just noping out of photo shoots, if it's safe to do, is definitely an option. Um, I've I've been there once, for sure. Let's see. So, moving on from the safety side of things from cosplay photo shoots, um, remembering things. <laughs> yeah, having someone on rescue call is important. But even just, like, thinking about when you're going to a photo shoot, thinking about the things that you need to bring. I've had times where I have forgotten my wig or I brought the wrong one to a photo shoot. Um, now my uh, wigs are all in labeled boxes. I have shoe boxes that are uh, two wigs per box. They are very different wigs from each other to make sure that I don't mix them up. Um, but I always, and everyone's a little bit different, but I always have like a checklist with me, especially if I am bringing, yeah, 50 shades of blonde wigs. Um, especially if I'm bringing, uh, the costume with me and not wearing everything to the shoot, which is what I did on the other day for my Vexalia shoot at the graveyard. I had a checklist and made sure I had all the jewelry, I had my ears, I had the correct wig, I had like the little comb feather that she wears, I had all of the different elements that I needed, and I made sure that they were all together in the correct spot uh, so that I had everything with me. You can still work around it if you forget something. Like I remember when I cosplayed as Keith from Voltron, forgot my fingerless gloves just completely forgot them at home and i was on the east coast of the u.s at katsukan so i just said well keith does not have his fingerless gloves this time that is just what i have to deal with but luckily i did have the jacket that would have been a little bit difficult but uh, i always find the checklists are the easiest thing for me i always remember Yeah, and my method of doing it is, like, I'll write starting from, you no know, hands for the shoot. So, like, I start from my feet, and I'm like, okay, so I need the boots, I need the, the jeans, whatever it is. I need the belt, I need the pouches, I need the, the shirt, the corset, the top, the tie, whatever it is. I go from the bottom, and I work my way up. Because up here is where things are much more complicated. Uh, because you have your contacts, you have any jewelry, you have your wig, you have any like hair, like things that are in the hair, all of that stuff. And so uh, that's where things get much more complicated. And so it's always easier to go from the bottom up. Let's see. Uh, Gracie, do you have any other insights or uh, questions? Because I, I see you in the audience. Fellow cosplayer. Sorry to call you out. <laughs> because to me, uh, panels should always be collaborative. <laughs> oh, good. 
I'm glad. Yeah, my panels at conventions, I'm always asking the audience to ask questions because um, maybe I'm saying something that is absolutely not relevant to the questions that you have or uh, things that you're curious about, things like that. Uh, even with the photographer and cosplayer collab and aesthetic, yeah. yeah. And like I said, it's always important to uh, think about the photo shoot that you want to do and who will fit that. Um, like, I have a very particular style oftentimes, like with the, the framing that I do for my photos, I love to do angled shots. And so you'll see like the photos that I did of, um, I'm forgetting their username right now, Ray something, but um, I did a photo shoot of their um, uh, ending episode, Adam from Skate the Infinity. Um, I did some photos of them and of uh, my other um, Adventures of Alexar, uh, my other Joe. Uh, I did photos of them at KatsuCon, and I have this very funky angle that I do on their shots because I just, I love angled shots. They're so much fun. Let's see. E each photographer has a different aesthetic, and what you want to go for looking at their Instagram is best. Absolutely. And if they post on their stories, like behind the scenes or even just ch talking and stuff like that, you can kind of get a better vibe for who they are as a person. Because just because you see their photos, if you don't interact with them, you don't necessarily know who they are and how they act. So looking at their stories, if they have a TikTok account, for example, it's always a really good way to see how they are. Like, uh, so say we all photography, he's in the UK, but he also comes over to Germany, uh, is constantly posting on his TikTok channel about like his editing process and things like that. And you really get an idea of who a person is from those kinds of things. Let's see, what do you prefer, natural edits or composed highly curated photos? Honestly, Again, it depends. Like these photos here uh, on the screen right now, these are all very natural, very basic edits. Um, I have some where there's like magic or for example, with, uh, with Howl, let me go back, clicking on this. So with Howl, I mean, obviously you can see that this is uh, highly edited. And that's not a bad thing. It's a very particular style. And something to think about with this is um, there's only so much that you can edit in post. And so uh, the less you have to make the photographer do, the better. Uh, so for example, with this, um, she very specifically had us severely highlight our cheeks because it is her specific style that she has these extremely strong, extremely edited features. That's her style and that's perfectly fine. Um, but then uh, one that I think of, I uh, did a photo shoot for someone who was a blue character gesture from Critical Role. I do a lot with Critical Role. Um, for anyone who knows uh, that character, so she's blue. Uh, so she, this uh, girl had arm socks up to here um, and then it was like slightly sheer black stripes um, up here that capped and uh, she had the the makeup all the way down to her collar and so there were not very many edits to make however the sheer uh, stripes on the black of her sleeves I had to go in and I had to edit uh, blue along to make it continuous so it didn't look like um, arm socks and I had to fix some splotches which is not the end of the world um, that's part of being a photographer. You have to make edits to make it a good photo on top of like the photo itself. Um, at least to me, there are some photographers who are just like, no, I just naturally, I take the photo and that is the end. No edits at all. Nothing. It is the pure photo, which is another style. It's not a style that I personally like, but that's me. Um, let's see, to be honest, minor edits, detail corrections usually take the most time. Absolutely. Like fixing the line of a wig, if it's not perfect, like I always want to make sure like there are no bobby pins visible in my photos, things like that. Um, I will always make those edits and corrections. Uh, let's see, I used to do heavy edits like facial features, background and all. Yeah. Um, the, um, 
I'm forgetting the official name of the uh, the Adam look, but with the uh, with the spine and like the funeral Adam, I think that's what we call it. So the funeral Adam look that I edited, I actually went through, and this uh, cosplayer had like uh, Velcroed bits and things on. It was a really beautiful costume, but naturally part of posing and things. Some things go out of whack. And so I went in and I made sure that those pieces were all in place the way they were supposed to be, the way that they wanted them to be, and not exposing Velcro and things like that. That took a lot of time, but it was absolutely worth it for the final edits. I'm just and you see. Yeah, it was so much work, but it was so worth it in the end. Uh, and they were very, very happy with the photos, and that was what was important to me. Yeah, it really does. It gives it a nice finished touch when you focus on things like that and just do, the, do those tiny little bits. Um, it makes it, it elevates it uh, in a way that it wouldn't otherwise. And I remember I did a photo shoot for a friend. Actually, uh, the friend that did my photos at Katsukon this year, and she was cosplaying as Portia from the Arcana, the the uh, the mobile app game. Um, and uh, she was on the beach at Katsukon, and there was trash everywhere on the beach because it's DC. And so I just went in and I edited out every single piece of trash from that beach because I didn't want there to be trash in this beautiful photo. <laughs> but there's some people who just wouldn't do those edits. For male characters, I also always lift the shoulders slightly and it makes a picture so much more cohesive. Also editing out the rims of lenses, natural eye color, boom, different person, 100%. Uh, it definitely elevates things. Also, uh, one thing that always bothers me uh, with, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this in the uh, putting the play in cosplay panel tomorrow, but one thing that always bothers me is when people are very, very uh, judgmental saying, you shouldn't uh, be cosplaying this particular way, or, oh, you didn't have contact lenses, blah, blah, blah. You can easily edit photos. I, um, I did a photo shoot for um, the, the young woman that I used to babysit. She's 21 now. Um, it's Ava, not Eva, if any of you uh, follow her TikTok. Um, but she did a cosplay of Power from Chainsaw Man and didn't have the lenses. She couldn't find them. And I went in and I edited the contact lenses onto her eyes. It's not hard to do. <laughs> Let's see. I definitely want to add to the edits thing. I like a little bit of both. I like to call it putting things in place because sometimes they don't capture well on camera. 100%. Sometimes the color isn't quite right. Sometimes you miss something in like the positioning of your wig or like a common one with these kinds of wigs is like you get a little bit of the real hair here. It's not completely covered up. So just fixing that, uh, that kind of thing. The contact lens one is so real. Yeah, and um, the other day for my photo shoot, I had to debate between having contacts at all and just being blind because these are prescription lenses. Um, I could not find a pair of lenses that were working and functional, uh, and then I eventually found a pair. Um, but I would much rather be blind as a bat at a photo shoot than uh, to walk around in lenses that are destroying my eyeballs. Not everyone can wear contact lenses. It's not a bad thing. If you want to edit the eyeballs in a photo, that is perfectly valid. I have a cosplayer who cannot wear lenses that I do photo shoots for all the time. And I will go in and if he's Lloyd Forger, I am going through and editing that sky blue gray color onto his eyes. Hard to do, but it's worth it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Cosplay the way you want to cosplay. That's the important thing. 
Let's see. I've moved on to wearing my prescription lenses for characters with blue eyes. Why get colored lenses? Exactly. Like I have hazily eyes, uh, multicolored eyes. And so sometimes I look and I'm just like, oh, yes, this character has hazel eyes. They have kind of bluish greenish eyes. Cool. No lenses ne needed. It's fine. Uh, I do that a lot. One of the things that I really like about lenses is that they make the eyes look a little bit bigger. And so um, I really like that, especially for my anime characters, but in no means is it a requirement. And uh, um, in addition, part of that is I have an astigmatism in this eye. And so I need to get a slightly bigger lens to fit over the astigmatism. The, this eye is not perfectly able to see, but it's good enough. And that's the important thing. And get rid of your lenses. If they're only like three month lenses, get new ones. You only have one pair of eyes. Don't use the lenses forever. You can buy new ones, it's fine. Don't share, oh God. I mean, it helps that I have prescription lenses, but also who would share lenses with people? Oh God, that's terrible. Um, yeah. Well, the thing is that prescription costume lenses, oh God, and no lens stacking, definitely not, don't do it. It is dangerous for your eyes to do that. Um, with an astigmatism, you are extremely limited in the color options that you have. My trick, um, first of all, I don't wear them for very long, but uh, my trick is to get the lenses that are bigger uh, because they cover more space and you just get the closest prescription to what your astigmatism eye has. It's not perfect, but it works. And the moment that it hurts, take them out. Do not wear lenses that are hurting your eyes. If they are dry, like if you open up that little container and it is like dry and shriveled, do not try to rehydrate it, throw it away. It's not healthy for you. So that's, sorry, I have very high, like very strong opinions <laughs> about contact lenses in the cosplay community because I see so many people doing dangerous things with contact. Oh, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> A little rant there. I'm just waiting to see what other people are saying. Yeah, one of the things that I do, like, I have contacts from a very specific um, section of a website, and these are contacts that were recommended by my eye doctor back in the U.S. Like, they were selling them at the eye doctor, and so I felt comfortable buying them from the online website. Online website, that's redundant. Um, because of that. Uh, buy them from reputable sources. If they are super cheap lenses, they are probably not safe for your eyes either. Maybe they can be, but a lot of times they're not. Um, let's see. Uh, my astigmatism is just minor enough that I can just go with regular prescription lenses and it's usually fine, but my old cat eyes, you can tell which eye has an astigmatism because the bright yellow pupil just very slightly lifts off the eye and makes a little dark spot. Oh, interesting. See, I do uh, cat eye lenses for one particular character. Uh, anyone who, God, I talk so much about Critical Role. I'm sorry, but anyone who knows Critical Role, there's a character called Kaliana Mordson. I actually have, did I end up putting one of my photos? I don't think that I did. No, I didn't. Um, so uh, Kaliana has one cat eye because she's part dragon. And so I have one cat eye, and of course it's on the bad eye. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, the thing that bugs me is that a lot of times with those cat eye lenses, you need to uh, get weighted ones if you want the cat eye to stay up and down. Otherwise, it just turns in your eye, and then you have to adjust it. And your hand has to be clean to adjust it. Don't have dirty fingers touching contacts. <laughs> PSA about contacts. Um, one other important thing to note about, um, I know that we're nearing the end of the, the panel time, uh, but one really important thing to note about cosplay photo shoots and things is knowing what your rights are 
um, and knowing um, what you're allowed to do with the photos that you have. The common one is, of course, you're able to post these photos on social media. Um, you have to credit the photographers. Um, you also should ask if you're going to make edits ask for permission. If they say no, they say no. You do not have the right to edit the photos, even color editing, because the photographer has a very specific look that they want for their photos, for their photo shoots, and you have to respect that. Um, that being uh, said, in addition, you also need to know what your rights are for printing and selling, for example. So I'm going to pop over to my last slide. I'm selling merch and stuff uh, for CitrusCon. Um, any of my photos that you see on my Redbubble shop, they I got permission from all of my photographers and I credited them in the descriptions. So uh, any photos that I used in any of the merch, I got permission for. Uh, for my um, streetwear Matcha Blossom photos, I had to pay a fee for permission for commercial rights to uh, use them in merchandise to sell, which is perfectly fine and perfectly valid to do. Some photographers will just say, sure, use the photos. It's fine. I don't care. Uh, but others will require you to pay either per photo or per photo shoot. So the streetwear ones I did per the, just a straight fee for the photo shoot, and then it's perfectly fine to sell them. Um, but, and then other photographers just said, yeah, it's fine. Go ahead and, uh, sell the photos. I'm okay with that. But you always need to ask permission. You always need to make sure that it's okay. Um, any, any questions about that? I have, uh, strong opinions about that too, simply because I have it both from the photographer perspective and the cosplayer perspective. Like I can understand and see it both ways. So uh, always asking for permission, always making sure that everything's okay. It's just respectful to do that. It's respectful uh, towards your photographer's time and work because photography is a lot of work. It's not just pointing and shooting and taking a, po a photo. It's your experience. It is uh, like as a photographer, it is uh, uh, like, like I have a degree in photography. I have training. I have uh, like... I don't know, 15 years professional experience as a photographer. And so you're also respecting my time and my training with that. Um, it's also fine, you uh, notes, it's also fine to just take percentages from the sales as well. Exactly. So if I say, for example, um, one option could be that I sell like 10 prints. I was about to say 15. I was like, that's not going to happen. I sell 10 prints of my cherry blossom photo. Uh, say Cleography said, okay, I want to take 10% of your sales. Whatever she wanted to do, that's what I would do. Um, it just depends. Yes, and you've both worked hard on them, as you says. Like, um, this cosplay, 55 hours to make. It takes a lot of time and effort to make it. Um, this costume, it's very fun. It's very lovely. It's a closet cosplay, um, other than the wig and like jewelry and stuff like that, but still. Yeah. And as you, you says, rights do change from country to country. This is very, very true. Uh, yes. Creatives should respect each other's hard work. Thank you for that note, Kyle. Um, uh, and I think that that's a really good spot to leave it. And yes. That is a good point as well, Yu Yu. I do have a business license. Um, of course, all of the proceeds from my uh, Redbubble shop are going to be donated to the Maui Strong Fund. Uh, Maui, is that right? Yeah, Maui Strong Fund. So um, I'm not going to be making any money off of any sales of anything that you want here. So um, yeah, I want to help raise a little bit of money for them. Yeah. So if you want anything, I have Yuri Pulzetsky, I have Matcha Blossom, and Cherry, and Longa, and all different kinds. Yeah, so uh, thank you all so much for joining this panel. Slightly chaotic, but it was a good time. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm in the Discord server. I'll be around for a few more hours tonight. Um, and then tomorrow at 
2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Yu Yu, who's been in the chat, and myself, and uh, two absolutely wonderful uh, Matcha Blossom cosplayers uh, from the West Coast US. Uh, we're going to be doing a panel on putting the play in cosplay and talking about um, how there's no one true way to cosplay. There's so many different ways to do it and make it your own and have fun. Uh, so definitely come check that out. We're going to be streaming it on Twitch. So it'll be on the CitrusCon uh, Twitch channel. So be sure to check that out. Hype. Uh, but I think we'll leave it there. You all have a good rest of your con. Thank you so much for joining. Bye, everyone.